I'm Kelly Barker, I'm the Head of Marketing at Dora Wildlife Conservation Trust and here I am in the strangest little pod in a place called Your Tail. In fact I'm just going to pan around and show you this little dinky room and perhaps I should explain why I'm even doing this. Tomorrow morning I'm going to Madagascar. I'm up in about five hours time, I've got a ridiculously early start but I'm so excited I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep anyway. So I'm in the pod. I can just about fit my extensive amount of luggage, which I'm just going to show you now. This is abysmal filming, about, by the way. So we have one large backpack full to the brim. A large bag full of football kits, don't even ask. And a rucksack that seems to weigh about 20 kilos. So, as head of marketing, having worked at Daryl for six years, Finally my time has come to be able to visit Madagascar which is one of our biggest conservation programs. We work out in eight regions saving some of the most endangered species on the planet. One example is the plowshare tortoise which I'm hoping that I'm going to get to see what we do with that species. Um, the potchard is another example. There are about 43 Madagascar potchards left on the planet at the minute. And I'm hoping that I'm actually going to get to see firsthand out in Madagascar what we do to save this species so that it doesn't go extinct. So as you can imagine, I'm really, really excited. I'm usually based in Jersey at the headquarters and I, I listen to my colleagues who work all over the world talk about their experiences and, and what it is that we do in the field, the hands-on conservation, and I'm actually finally going to get to see it for myself. So it's getting pretty late. I'm going to um, get my pyjamas on, try and sleep in this uh, dinky little pod and um, tomorrow I've got a 10 hour flight to Antananarivo or Tana is probably the easiest way to explain that one. So the next time you're going to hear from me I'll probably be in my hotel in the capital of Madagascar which is Tana. So um, night night guys. So it's quarter past one in the morning I've just got to the Maison de Pila which is the um, lovely little hotel actually in the capital um, I was up at 4am this morning so I haven't got a lot of chat in me but I just wanted to say that from what I've seen so far it kind of reminds me a little bit of Kenya it was pitch black, the taxi driver was lovely, bless him although I was a bit disappointed in myself for not brushing up on my French because he can only speak French and there's so much that I wanted to ask him. Um, I've already seen some wildlife, saw the biggest grasshopper on the runway ever known to man, albeit it was dead, um, and loads of stray dogs, so I'm kind of wishing I could have squoze that last rabies job in now. I've got my mazinette ready to go, I'm absolutely covered in repellent, I'm going to get some decent kit now and hopefully check in when I've got a lot more to say and I've seen Madagascar in the daylight. 99! Okay, so this is my first day in Madagascar. I've not even been met by anyone from the team yet. Just on the balcony. First glimpse during the day of the city, of the capital. So I'm finally here in Madagascar, I'm in the capital um, where our headquarters in Madagascar in Tana is. I arrived at 2 o'clock in the morning, looking a little bit worse for wear but I'm feeling a lot better now. I'm just in the um, quarantine um, part of the plowshare tortoises that were seized back in August at the airport. Um, we've got two adults, two sub-adults and 28 babies, all in, well the babies certainly were in suitcases, ready to go to Southeast Asia and we seized at the airport which is brilliant and we've been really well looked after here between Angelo, Claude and Lance who work here at the office, they're just having the perfect life really. So they're going to be in quarantine here for six months and then they should move on to Ampajuri which is our captive breeding centre where we have many other plowshares at the moment. The guys here have been so welcoming, I couldn't have had a better reception. I'm really looking forward to the rest of this trip, starting with an environmental festival tomorrow. Um, 
in the Nassifilu River where lots of people come from different villages to the town to get together and celebrate what's been happening with fish. So I'm looking forward to seeing community conservation and people, how they come together to really make a difference to conservation. Okay, so um, are you going to show me how to age them? Uh, for the tortoise, we can count the growth rings as an age. So this one is about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and some small ones. So for this one, it's not easy to count. And that happens when the tortoise is getting older. For this one, for example, you see the tortoise, the shell become to be uh, smooth and you cannot count the growth things anymore, mm. which means he's more than 27 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And how old can these animals live to? What's the average age? Uh, until now, no one knows how long they can live, but we think it can live more than 150 years. Wow. You see, the male and the female are different. For example, the male is longer than the female, and they have any other characters that you can distinguish. Mm. This is a female, for example, and this is a male. I can tell you, in here, you, you look at the plow, that's why it got its name. Uh -huh. The female has a shorter uh, plow, which is the cular skew. Yeah. And the male has a longer one. And the female has a shorter uh, carapace length. And this has a longer carapace length. And if you look at the, at the, this side, the female has just a flat uh, plastron, but the male is concave. Mm. And if you look at the, at the anal fork, the male has a longer anal fork, wider one than the female. And for the female, this place is quite uh, bigger. So in that way, the egg can come out. Mm. But the male has a sh longer uh, tail. Yeah. And shorter opening here. Mm.